Right and, and 
and shining light for us. Uh, we're even thankful for people who can smack their thumb with a hammer and not use a cursor with it because they're a good example to all of us of what it is to live a Christian life. Thank you for Nate and Ivy who were here this morning who are serving uh, overseas and uh, in ministry to you. We're looking forward for them to be here and share with us about that ministry. Uh, Father, we pray for all of those who are still struggling with the COVID-19, uh, whether they have it or recovering from it, and we want to especially pray for the families who've lost loved ones as a result of this uh, pandemic. Uh, we know that uh, we're losing loved ones for all kinds of other reasons as well, uh, cancer and flu and many things going on. But Lord, we're going to keep looking to you as the solution to all of the issues that beset us, all of the problems that we have. We're going to, be to as the scripture admonishes us, to be content in our circumstances and to pray to you during the good and the bad. And we know, God, that for those who love you, you can bring good out of everything. We just don't sometimes see it, but we know it's coming. And so, Lord, we're thank you, thankful for that. We pray again your blessings upon all of those who were able to be here this morning. And upon the Cheesemans as they've come to share with us, we thank you for all of those who are ministering to us with song and music and ushers and all the other that, that's going on here today. We all love the Lord. We all love you, God. We all love Jesus. And we all want to lift him up and celebrate him and worship him uh, in the remainder of this hour. And it is in Jesus' precious name that we pray. Amen. <laughs>
Bibles. I'll be reading from Psalms 103, 1 to 12. Psalms 103, 1 to 12. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are opposed. Oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our inequities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is the steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. Thank you. May God have his read. blessing on the reading of his word. Right now we're going to sing a couple more songs with your name. Right now. <laughs>
Thank you.
for uh, joining us uh, this morning. Uh, we have a special treat. Uh, it's always a treat to have our missionaries with us. Uh, good to have the Cheesemans here. Uh, I, I remember back in 2011, as we moved in, they were preparing to leave for uh, Thailand. And so, uh, if you guys want to go ahead and come up, come on up here. I'd like to uh, pray uh, as you share. God has used uh, them in uh, so many mighty ways uh, there in uh, Chiang Mai province, uh, there in Thailand. So we're going to turn it over to them in just a moment. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we do thank you for the Cheeseman family. And uh, Father, we thank you for uh, their work over many, many years uh, there in Thailand. And we thank you, Father, for the impact uh, that they have had in the lives of the Thai people. We thank you, Father, for the contacts that they have made. Uh, the opportunities you've given them to share Jesus Christ. And Father, we praise you uh, for the opportunity we have as a church family to have them with us. Uh, they are an extension of our ministry. And Father, we thank you for uh, their faithfulness to you. And Father, we do uh, thank you that they've been able to uh, get away for a little bit on furlough, <coughs> to be able to rest a little bit, uh, some unusual circumstances, but I know that... Uh, uh, even in the, these times that uh, they have been able to rest and refocus, and we uh, give thanks uh, for that. Uh, Lord, bless them now as they share, and we pray that uh, we would be encouraged and challenged as well, and that you alone would be glorified. Again, we thank you, and we give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> mission field by 2004, that was my goal, and um, so um, they are praying, and I feel like the, the finances weren't coming in at the time, and I just prayed to God, like, this doesn't seem really possible to reach the mission field by 2004, and God started bringing in the rest of the finances rather quickly, and one of the last things that happened was Porter said they want to be part of your support team, and that kind of, you know, I could see going to the mission field kind of reality your generous support and you know that's continued over the years so I want to say thank you um, yeah, so there's four of us Andy, myself, and Teresa and Amara and we work in Thailand in Southeast Asia and if you go to the next slide um, it's, this is where Thailand is so down by Vietnam, Myanmar, south of China and there's many languages that are spoken in Asia like hundreds of languages and there's lots of Languages like we've had the Bible in English for 700 years. There are languages in this region that have don't even have one verse of scripture, and so a lot of the countries that surround Thailand, there's levels of persecution. And as I came in this morning, I saw right there there's the big um, Voice of the Martyr banner that you guys have that's hanging in the stairway. So countries that um, persecute Christians are surrounding Thailand. So Thailand is a very unique, safe place for. Christians to come, get training, and then go back out to these areas that are difficult to work in, places that we might never be able to get in into ourselves. Um, and so future Bible translators, people that want to translate the Bible into languages that don't even have it, they come into our city for training. And if you go to the next slide, um, these are some of the individuals that have come in to receive training, like a master's degree in linguistics. So that they can go back out and translate God's word. So our role is not directly the Bible translation, but our role is to support these um, uh, future Bible translators so that they can get God's word out to people. 
our daughter asked us, so why do you have all these black things over your eyes? And the reason is protector at Dendio. Some of these students are coming from places where maybe their homes been burned down before by soldiers coming through and you know, like Christians from different areas where there's persecution. And we're grateful for their, they're just very courageous for Christ, individuals who come in and get training and go back and then help with translation. So that's our official role, is being there to um, help support this team. But just like you guys, there is your nine to five job and then you're still proud to be a Christian when you're done with your work in after hours. And that's where we feel like a lot of our ministry can be too, is just in our neighbor, neighborhood, getting to know neighbors. So on the next slide, I was trying to think of how do I even start to describe our neighborhood? Just kind of thinking through what's around us and people just kept coming to mind. Um, I don't know about around here, but I grew up um, in a really rural area in Ohio, and if I go out for a walk down the road, a car will drive by, and I may have no idea who's in that car, but they'll wave at me, because there's not many people out on the road, and so they wave at it, whoever goes by. In our neighborhood, there's just always people, always vehicles, motorcycles, people walking by, and someone's always ringing our doorbell. Um, this guy comes around, he sells fruit, and rings the doorbell, whatever he has for the day to sell. Um, kids from a Thai church will come and ring the doorbell. So I love that interaction that we get with people. And as an introvert, sometimes that's always so challenging for me, um, just always being ready for what God might want to do. If we're you know, walking down the street and I don't have a mission of where I want to go, God may have something else that he wants me to do and stop and just interact and love people along the way. Um, that's a special part for us in our neighborhood. On the next slide, one of the first things you might notice if you came to our city is these are called spirit houses. And every apartment, every business, every house will typically have one of these out in front. And it's a place where you can make offerings and try to appease the spirits of there. Thai people are Buddhist, but there's a lot of what's called animism mixed into that. And so the goal here is you put out um, a favorite food, maybe a soft drink or a plate of rice that your great grandpa really liked. And it's a way to try to honor him and try to get his spirit to stay in your property and protect your house. And also to help appease evil spirits, because you don't want the evil spirits to get angry at you. Um, so, you know, our neighbor might put out a chicken out in front of their house and their spirit house. And there's a lot of um, fear tied up. It's a lot of bondage where you know, everything from when you give birth, you know, you go and talk with the people at the temple about what day is the lucky day to give birth. Um, when you get a haircut, when you clip your fingernails, you know, so many things are tied up into the spirit world. There's a lot of fear connected to that. So the next slide, kind of our goal this morning is to share about our ministry, but we also want to share Bible verses that you can look at and uh, grow through these scripture verses. So in Thailand, you have you know fear of the spirits, but as Western people, we have fear of man that can be what are the peer pressure that you might, you know, you may be faced at school a long time ago, or your kids face it, um, keeping up with the neighbors, how's the weeds in my yard compared to the neighbor's yard, you know, stuff like this. Um, we, we fear man. So this is the first from Proverbs here. Fear of man will prove to be a snare, a snare like a trap, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. You know, when Solomon is writing in Ecclesiastes and he's summarizing like um, all of the life experience, he ends the book by saying, this is the end of Ecclesiastes, the end of the matter, all that has been heard, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man, for God will bring every deed into judgment with every secret thing, whether good or evil. So Solomon, wisest person that ever lived, is, is talking about you know, fearing the Lord. And so if we can put our, some people put their trust, their fear um, in evil spirits in the West, we might do that by fearing people, what people think about us at the office or wherever we're at. But our true, our true fear or reverence needs to be for the Lord. So on the next slide, um, also, here's, here's an example out of Timothy. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love 
and a, a sound mind. And this is a great coronavirus verse as well. Um, shouldn't be afraid, but you should have a sound mind and um, you should have love, right? It should be there as well. Um, so you can go to the next one. So we want Thai people to experience that freedom that Jesus brings us when we come to trust him and when we understand that Jesus is stronger than any other spirit. Our God is the one true God. Um, not to say these other spirits don't have power, but compared to Jesus, they become powerless when Jesus steps in and says, no, I'm God. So we see in the midst of all the Buddhism, the animism, and places where the spirits have a stronghold, God's at work. Um, when we first went to Thailand, we met up with this small church. At that time, there were about five believers um, at this church, and we ended up moving right next to where the church was meeting. So we'd hear this group singing right behind our backyard and, and just watching how that church has been growing over the years. Well, now there's about 40 to 60 people on any given Sunday. And if you walk into this church, um, it looks like you're going to youth group. They meet at the pastor's house, and they just meet in the living room, which is, I mean, the entire living room might be about like this platform here. And there's no furniture there. You just all sit on the floor, gather around, sing your heart out, whether you can sing on key or not. And just, they love Jesus, and they're being discipled um, by our pastor and his wife. Our pastor and his wife are very strong in wanting to not just have people add Jesus to a collection of gods or just say this prayer and they're good, but really disciple. What does the Bible say? How do we live this out among our families? Because um, in Thailand, when you become a Christian, sometimes your family will kind of want to kick you out of family for a while in an attempt to try to get you um, to participate in some of the sacrifices of the spirit world and um, help protect your family from these spirits. So it's a real struggle of how you um, work with the kids and the teenagers how you deal with their families. And slowly we're seeing some of the parents becoming Christians as well. Slowly changes happening in our community. One way that we've been able to be part of that on the next slide is just different outreaches the church has. Um, maybe they're teaching the kids how to bake something, teaching the kids how to do gardening. Because part of the church's goal is to teach the kids a lot of life skills. Um, some of these kids don't have parents who are very involved in their lives. Maybe dad's not in the picture anymore, and mom's doing her best to provide, and she's at work all day, every day. So as the church, they're able to really um, teach these kids a lot of different things, um, love on them. And so sometimes it might be we're baking breads with the church, um, which is usually a very sticky, messy process, but we just kind of roll with it. And something else they do on the next slide, when they do make different foods or grow things in their garden, the church is going out and passing these out among the neighbors. And when the church first got their neighbors were saying, I don't know that I really want these street kids hanging out in front of this house here. You know, I, I don't, I'm not comfortable with this. Well, as the, the neighbors have seen this change in the kids, these neighbors have experienced gifts from the church, they're starting to change their mind. Some of them have become Christians, many have not, but they're starting to stand up for those kids and say, no, we actually want a church here. We see what you're doing, it's a good thing. So again, just through time, we're seeing a change of heart um, in some in the community. And I think the church too is very prepared for it. Just trying to look at what the end times will be like. Um, our church is reading the Bible. They see in Revelation, there's going to be a lot of persecution. They said, let's start getting our neighbors. Let's start getting to know the government. Let's try to build those relationships um, so that when persecution comes, they at least have some friends in there. They've spread the gospel, but there's also some friends, and maybe some people will stick up for individuals in the church. Maybe some people won't. But they're very aware of trying to be a light in the community. On the next slide here, in the same way, let your good deeds <coughs> shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your Heavenly Father. And that's what we see the church being focused on here, being a light out in the community and not just a light inside the church. Um, so 
you know, on Facebook, you can see pictures of like what's happening back in Thailand. And one of those pictures um, from our friends were the church had got together and they along the houses along Thailand. There's kind of a sewer system, but you have to kind of pull up the cement blocks to get in there every once in a while and clean it out. So on their street where the church is, they pulled up some of the cement blocks and they cleaned out the gutter. That like, like just this is very dirty stuff. And they bucket brigaded, you know, the, the sewage basically to like an empty lot and dumped it. So that is letting your light shine before people and seeing your good work so that God can be glorified. Because most people are not, that's not, they're going to want somebody else to do that or pay somebody else to do that. But, you know, the church taking that initiative. Uh, this picture is um, uh, from our friend. This was taken in 2018. Uh, this guy's name is Pat, and he worked in the office where I work. And so, when we got over there, um, Pat is finishing up the New Testament in the Northern Thai language. So, so I'm at the office, you know, doing my stuff on my computer, and then behind me is Pat finishing up a New Testament. There's six million people that speak the Northern Thai language. So when Pat's done and it's published, think of the potential impact zone. So it's like six million people in Indiana. So think of like everybody in Indianapolis, and this is. Big deal. So, they had the dedication, I think it was 2018. Yeah, and so, um, so they finish up and they did the Bible in two formats. One was written scriptures and one was audio scriptures. So, like, some of you might use the Bible app on your phone where you can read God's Word and then you can push the play button and listen to what it says. Um, so, they actually translate it so people can listen. A church in Ohio had given us some money to purchase some Bibles, and so we got that, and we got some paper copies of the Bible. We also got some audio copies of the Bible. So if you go to the next slide, um, this oh, this is a, like the main verse that I want to talk about in this section. So faith comes by from hearing, and hearing through the Word of Christ. So, and I'm, I'm kind of sharing this next story to kind of keep this verse in your mind. So this is a talking Bible. And what it is, it's a little MP3 player, and you stick a little SD card chip, and you put the Bible onto that chip before you stick it in, and then it, it will just play the Bible. So, super glue, yeah. So we super glued the chip in so that people can't take it out and, you know, put in music. So you've got the little thumb drive where the thumb drive sticks in. So we'll put some super glue down there to kind of sort of disable the device. So you, we're trying to shoot for a... Uh, a Bible here. That's that's its kind of main purpose, right? So having these, then they can be passed out to people who would listen to the Bible. Maybe like a new Christian, maybe somebody who's never heard about Jesus before, but a Christian has a relationship with this person. So originally we got like maybe two or three of these, and then we got some more, and then it just like had this sort of exponential acceleration. So, like, one day I went to the store and got, like, 20, 20, 25 of these things, and it was kind of this really, like, exciting moment, like, do you, like, this, you know, is this, like, a break, is this, like, a break to, are we going to be able to get rid of these? How, like, what's going to happen, God? What are you going to do for having your word on these machines? And then about a month later, they were all gone. We've given them out. So we get more, and we get rid of them. And so um, what God was doing was he was bringing like other missionaries, other like a church planter, um, people that were working in like slum areas. It's like, hey, could you put the Bible in this other language? It's not even Northern Thai now. It's like the Shan language or you know, the seminary over in Myanmar. Burmese, could you make it in Burmese? Could you make it in these other languages? And we're like, no, we can, we can figure that out. So we were able to, to get them out and just saw again again how God is using this. You know, when you have the Bible over in Thailand, um, it's a pretty open country, but we can't just go down the street and pass these out. We really need that relationship. And so we love seeing how God provided all these relationships. Just, I mean, I'd go to the coffee shop and I would give one to a friend who asked about it, and some other customer would overhear the conversation and say, Well, I'm trying to 
we're doing Christian too, I'm trying to reach these people in this other city. Can I have a couple of those? And go to homeschool co-op. And there's someone here who happens to be planning a church. So like, we'd go on vacation. Like, okay, God, we just need a little break. Go on vacation. And we meet someone there who is very interested in getting God's word out. So it's it was just God putting this team together and doing this work that we haven't really planned at all. Yeah, so this picture is in our... Uh in our living room area, and just kind of this table full of these machines. We're trying to get them put together so we can get them out um, to other people. Oh, so when you have a culture that is afraid of evil spirits, what's Jesus doing in the New Testament? He's Jesus has power over these demons, and he's driving them out. You see that in example. So if people listen to that, they'll understand, like, there's a greater power, and that's through Jesus. So... On the next slide, um, this is the pastor that we met when we went on vacation. He said, I'd like to have a Bible in the Sean language because there's two families that work out on a farm, and this group of people has never heard about Jesus before. So if we can get the Bible to them, just let the Bible play so that they can hear, um, and this, these farmers could you know, hear about Jesus. On the next slide. So then the pandemic happens, and we're back in America, but we realize that God had helped us get out on 256 of these players you know, to different places. And as everybody's caught, their businesses are closing, uh, churches are closed, people have God's word that they can just listen to. So we don't know every story, we don't know every situation, but you know, God's word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It's, um, we know from the story of the sower, the seeds go into the ground, and some of them produce a hundredfold. So it'll be interesting to see what comes out of that. One story, um, it's a boy, it's a New Testament, the evil spirits are bothering him. He's listening to it, and he's, he's more at peace. He senses God's peace. He wants to keep listening. And then, so this verse, coming back to this verse, so faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. So on Sunday, you know, Pastor Randy, he's preaching God's word so that we can hear it, so that we can have faith. Some people choose to reject God's word. Um, people will always reject God's word, but some receive it, and it strengthens their faith. So this can be done through reading our Bible, reading the Bible out loud, um, scripture memory, some of the, the songs that we sing in church worship services, those are rooted in biblical truth that we find in scripture and um, rooted in God's word. So my challenge to you is um, what can you do to listen to God's word to increase your own faith? Um, it could be like everybody has to do dishes or pull them out of the dishwasher or full laundry and you just play like a chapter from Matthew a chapter from John on your phone just to listen to God's word get in there and the purpose is to build your faith to make your faith stronger so we have a lot of voices that compete the news or media all this stuff competes for our time but if we allow um, if we listen to God's word, I would just challenge you to find moments in your life where you can do that. It kind of works out well for me because I kind of don't like doing dishes, and Nate doesn't seem to mind because we we just kind of let dishes pile up through the day, and then he does dishes and listens to the Bible, and I think it's great. <laughs> um, one of our other things we saw God do um, over this last few years is from our friend Ki Boon. And some of you may have been here a few years ago when we shared about our friend Ki Boon. He's um, a guy we met when he showed up outside our house and was, we had just moved into our house and was out kind of digging through a trash. And he had gone out to say like, what are you doing? Going through a trash. And it turns out he's collecting recyclables. And we developed this relationship with Ki Boon. We said, well, let's just kind of sort the recyclables so you don't have to dig through our trash and we'll keep those separate for you. And he really liked that. And, He'd sometimes pull out pairs of shoes from other people's trash because in Thailand, he's a tall guy. 
And so you say, like, this is a really big pair of shoes. It might fit you. So it is kind of this colorful relationship that developed. The last time we were in the seats, we asked people, you know, pray for our friends over there. And we specifically showed Pi Boon's picture and said, pray for people like Pi Boon. Well, we got back to Thailand, and one day we're sitting down eating, and Pi Boon stops by. And we talk with him for a little while. And so he kind of stops, and he has kind of this smile, almost like an endearing guy on the way He's like, I'm a Christian. And I'm a Christian. And we're, you know, just seeing God's answer to prayer. Some of the neighborhood had started to disciple him, and he got baptized this spring. And just seeing Pi Boon's growth has been an amazing thing. And to see how God has answered prayer over time, prayer for many people praying for Pi Boon, um, has just strengthened our faith and shown us, again, how important prayer is in everything we do. Whether you know, you're being a missionary in Thailand, whether you're here doing work here, um, prayer is essential. <coughs> Um, on the next slide, we just want to share a few ways that you can be praying for our ministry. One is pray for soft hearts. These you know, over 250 Bibles that went out that people are you know, in their homes. And Thailand still is somewhat under a lockdown, um, not super strict anymore. But pray that God continues to work through those. We still hear just a trickling of reports coming in from people or maybe someone... Um, made a decision to start following Christ. Maybe someone, um, their mom has started to listen to it because they heard about it. Just pray that God continues to soften hearts and um, draw individuals to himself. Next slide. Pray for our ability to go back to Thailand. Um, we're scheduled to go back September 3rd. Right now, flights are going into the country. So we have a ticket, we're not sure if it's going to do us any good when September 3rd rolls around. Um, so we're just kind of in this holding pattern. There's a lot of decisions that we need to make because there are other ways to try to get in that we think we might qualify for, but it's super expensive, and if we don't do it, we might lose our visa. So there's just, we've got some decisions to make, and right now it's, there's nothing we can do. It's a waiting process. So our girls were asking us the other day, saying, I just want to know when we're going to go back home. I'm okay being here. I like being here. It's been okay. I want to be back home. But I just want to know when. And I feel like that speaks for me too. That I want to know when, but apparently we don't need to know yet. So we're waiting on God to let us know. I actually had a, it's a friend of ours made in yesterday. So it's, it is possible to you know, be um, make it back home. But yeah, it, you guys know what this is like. You know, the pandemic's changed everything for everybody and it affects us all in different ways. And this is just how it's affected us. So, you know, last prayer request, pray that we can abide in Christ. Um, it's very important to, um, Jesus talks about this idea of abiding in the vine. Remain in me and I in you and we can produce much fruit. So the idea that we need to stay connected to Jesus um, if we were to have effective ministry. So if you would pray that for us, in the back, we'll have um, prayer cards where you can pick one up. Since we weren't able to see as many churches as, as we thought we were going to see, we have plenty of prayer cards, so, you know, pick one, pick two. Um, since we have quite a few of them. And then there's a sheet where you can sign up if you want to receive our, um, we send out updates like every two months. Um, so if you're curious, you want to pray for us to be able to get back to Thailand, and you want to know how God works in that, um, we'll be able to get Thank you again for your prayer support, your encouragement, um, and your financial support. This is, I hope that as we share today, you saw where God was at work, and where you saw where you have been a part of that, through how you have been involved. So we're very thankful. Uh, for uh, taking the opportunity to share with us. Uh, we are excited uh, as you continue to serve faithfully uh, as to how God will continue to work uh, through you. Thank you, Nate and Ivy. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, close.
close in prayer, and then we'll invite the praise team back up, uh, and we will sing Because He Lives. Because He Lives, we can face tomorrow. Amen? Amen. Father, we do thank you that uh, our future is in your hands. Father, we do uh, pray uh, that you would continue to soften the hearts uh, of those in Thailand, and we pray that you would uh, soften even the hearts of those in our community to uh, their desperate need for Jesus. And Lord, we do uh, pray as well that you would uh, intervene in a very unique way to uh, to allow Nate and Ivy and the family to uh, get back to Thailand. Yeah, we know they long to return uh, where they can continue to serve you. In the meantime, we pray that you would give them uh, the patience that they need uh, as they wait on your timing. Uh, we pray that they would be again encouraged, uh, that they would get rested up, and uh, that they would enjoy their time here in the States. Uh, we also would pray for each and every one of us that we would abide in Jesus, that we would be growing and striving to become more like your son, Jesus Christ. And we know that uh, we can do that as we gather together as the body of Christ and worship, uh, as we open the word of God each day, pray and not only read, but apply your truth our lives. Help us to do that, we pray. And thank you again that because of Jesus, we can face the future. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand.